Hello and welcome to the Bible for Worship at St. Paul Lutheran Church on this Reformation Sunday when our two lessons are written in Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 3, verses 19 through 28, and the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 31 through 36. Paul writes, now we know that whatever the law says speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by God's grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous, and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. And John writes, Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. A slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So, if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These two texts for Reformation Sunday are familiar and iconic texts for those for whom Reformation celebrations are a tradition. And for any reader, these two texts are eloquent and powerful testimonies. Listen to the profound ideas and, and images that they lift up. Truth and sin and freedom and law and faith and works. One can hardly think of more significant or weighty issues for us to consider as a Christian community, as part of God's people. At the time of the Reformation, these notions were applied to a late medieval church, a church that functioned in ways that are largely unfamiliar to us today. And that means that between talking about the first century communities of Jesus and Paul and the 16th century communities of the Reformation, the reference points for the Reformation use of these texts are both rather unfamiliar to us. And yet, the tradition helps to point us almost invariably toward reading these texts as talking somehow about Jews and Christians, about Judaism and Christianity as religions, as systems, because Martin Luther, first and foremost, 
apply these texts, the language of law and works and sin, to the Pope and the Pope's circle in Rome as figures of the Jews or the Pharisees whom Paul and John were addressing. Well, that was Luther's application of them, but without that vortex of interpretation that Luther gave them, drawn in by the excesses and the errors that he saw in the Pope and emanating from Rome throughout the European Church, without that vortex of interpretation, we can see more clearly what it is that Paul and John were addressing. We'll start with Paul, the earlier of the two writers, where he says that every human value system, which he refers to as a law, every human value system, every law is deadening, and it emphasizes failure. After all, we don't write laws about things that are unobjectionable. We only write laws about things to which we object. So a law, a value system enshrined in human values, will almost inevitably focus on failure. But God's redemption of Israel in the Exodus, God's saving of Israel in the Exodus, and Jesus' life and death and resurrection, by contrast for Paul, do not focus on failure, but they create an ongoing relationship. That relationship, which God had with Abraham, which God had with Israel, which God has with Jesus, which God has with all who come to God through Jesus, that relationship is called faith. Faith. And the emphasis in that ongoing relationship is life and promise. That's what it is to which Paul directs the attention of the readers in the book of Romans, that rather than focusing on human value systems that that emphasize failure, look at the relationship that God has offered the entire world, the relationship of faith that builds life and offers promise. Similarly, John, the gospel writer, likewise talks about not a system, but a relationship because he contrasts the system of rules and expectations and obligations in which servants or slaves live with the life that the children of a household live. When one is a servant or especially a slave, there's a rule book to follow. There's a system to which one is bound. Children in the household are not bound to such a system or a rule book. They are, in John's words, truly free. And God built a relationship like that with Abraham and with the Jews through Abraham. Abraham trusted God, believed in God. Abraham accepted the relationship of faith, as Paul says, and God made that the right relationship for Abraham. And so for Abraham's descendants who hold to that relationship. And so now in Jesus, Jesus offers the same relationship with God. A relationship that is now available to the entire world. These are the themes of Romans and of John as they presented them to their communities. Themes of life and of promise and of freedom and of ongoing relationship with God. Not limited by what community you're in or how you came to that relationship, but from God's perspective, uniting all the world and offering everyone 
that life-giving relationship that we call faith. You know, any of us, any of us can foolishly trade a rich, meaningful relationship for some system to which we become locked in and that hems in the possibilities. But God always continues to hold out to us a relationship with God that frees us and that is open to all. God bless.